Conjoined twins and their complex lives have made headlines for generations. Depending on where they're conjoined, each set of twins works a little bit differently. What's it like to live as a conjoined twin? And is there any way to separate them? This is your body on conjoined twins. Conjoined twins develop when an early embryo partially splits to form two individuals. They are considered identical twins because they develop from the same fertilized egg. They usually share one or more internal organs. In rare cases, one twin will be smaller than the other or even partially developed. What factors make for a successful separation? Staying conjoined. Abby and Brittany Hensel, in their 30s, are working as teachers. They're joined side to side at the pelvis, the abdomen, and chest, but they have separate heads. They share one liver, one large intestine, and one reproductive system. They learned from a young age to coordinate. Abby controls the right hand while Brittany controls the left. But some physiological factors differ. Brittany can't drink much coffee because her heart rate increases while Abby is fine. Traveling can be a challenge for them. They take up one seat on a plane as they share most of their pelvis, so they need one ticket, but they have two passports. The best thing about being conjoined twins is there's always someone there to talk to. And you're never alone. Krista and Tatiana Hogan are a rare example of craniopagus twins. Born in 2006, they're conjoined at the head. According to the UC Davis Children's Hospital, craniopagus twins occur once in every 2.5 million births. Their brains are connected and they share the senses of touch and taste. They can control one another's limbs and see out of one another's eyes. We have eyes back to our heads. They also say they know one another's thoughts without speaking. But how were these twins even born? The birth. Even before they enter this world, the lives of conjoined twins are complicated. Doctors prepare for months to minimize the risks to the babies and the mother. They perform a fetal MRI to know more about the anatomic structure of the twins. Doctors can use this information to develop conjoined mannequin dolls as models for the twins. This helps the medical team rehearse the delivery multiple times. The twins are brought prematurely into this world via a cesarean section. Approximately 70% of conjoined twins are female. And sadly, about 40% of conjoined twins are stillborn or die shortly after birth. Some are born with compromised airways or collapsed lungs. They need a continuous airway pressure machine to help them breathe. Even after birth, conjoined twins face a difficult life ahead. They may need to be separated. Separation. Separating conjoined twins when they are younger makes the process less complicated. As they age, their organs develop and become larger and possibly more entwined. There is also a higher risk of shared blood vessels. The success of the separation depends on the expertise of the surgical teams and the available technology. The process requires detailed planning by general surgeons, plastic and reconstructive surgeons, and neurosurgeons. Specialists use virtual reality and develop 3D printed models of the twins' bodies, particularly the areas that are fused. These models help the team to plan and practice the surgical process with great precision. Surgeries may take hours or days to complete. 
organs are divided, so each twin has a functioning and independent circulatory system. The survival rate for separated conjoined twins is between 5 and 25 percent. Luckily, the separation process is improving and the success rate of surgeries is increasing. She stole my belly button. So. I did. I had two belly buttons. Stories of conjoined twins have fascinated the science community. These twins face many challenges, but inspiring stories prove they are capable of anything. Now, have you ever wondered what it would feel like to have octuplets? Eee, we'll find out on another episode of Your Body On.